All right, so today we're going to talk about function operations. We're going to get a little bit more into functions. Um, we've already talked about functions. We talked about function notation already. Um, function notation is that f of x uh, used instead of a y, right? So instead of writing a linear function like y equals x plus 2, we write function notation of f of x equals x plus 2. And it's just a different way of writing a function, right? We just change those guys out. Um, we can take a, uh, two different functions and perform some operations on them. Um, not too terribly difficult, um, but a little tricky. We've got to avoid some landmines here, so let's uh, take a look. So uh, by the time we're done, we should be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. And then we're going to talk about something called the composite of two functions. And this is going to get a little tricky. Um, but I think if we just kind of uh, keep our focus, we should be in good shape. So uh, here's the standards we're going to hit. Uh, so basically, if you're going to perform those four operations that I mentioned first, addition, subtraction, uh, sorry, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, um, one, a couple things first. Number one, the way that that would be notated, right, in function notation, if we wanted to add two functions, we'll write it like this, f plus g of x. So we're going to create a new function by adding the f and the g function together. Um, and how do we do that? Well, I mean, that's just like I said, right? We're going to take the f function, and then we're going to add the g function to it. We're going to combine like terms, uh, simplify it down, and then we'll be ready. Uh, we, we'll have created our new function and be ready to work with it. If we're going to subtract, the way we'd write that is f minus g of x, just like this. And that's how you read it, f minus g of x. All that means is we're going to take the f function and we're going to subtract the g function from it. Uh, and we'll create some new function that we can work with from there. Multiplication. f times g of x. That's how we'll write it, f times g of x. And all that means is that we're going to take the f function and multiply the g function to it. And we'll put um, definitions to these functions in just a second. And then if we're going to divide two functions, we'll write it as f divided by g of x. Um, and all we do is we simply take the f function and we divide it by the g function. And since we're um, doing division, we have to add in here this caveat that the g function cannot be equal to zero. Um, when we define the function, g cannot be defined as zero, because we can't divide by zero. So not anything that we've got to spend a lot of time worrying about, but mathematically we have to throw it in there so that it makes some sense. All right, let's take a look at how to do these. So number one here, f of g plus, uh, sorry, f of x plus g of x. We're trying to figure out what f plus g of x is, this new function. Well, all we're going to do is take the f function, defined as 3x plus 6. Put that here, 3x plus 6. And then we're going to add to it whatever the g function is defined as, which is x plus 2, and put it here, x plus 2. And now we just combine like terms. 3x plus x is 4x. 6 plus 2 is 8. And so f plus g of x is 4x plus 8. And now if we wanted to evaluate the new function at some particular domain value, right, some particular x, we would write it as f plus g of, let's say, 2. And all that means is that we're going to put 2 in for that x, right? So 4 times 2 plus 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. Okay, uh, that's a step further than what you had to go in your notes, but I wanted to kind of throw that notation out at you. Just to remind you, we did uh, a little bit of this function notation with our piecewise before, but just a reminder. Okay, um, so you go ahead and try. Um, H of X plus K of X, we want to come up with H plus K of X. Give that a shot. Stop the video, and you can start it back up and make sure that you're thinking about this correctly. 
Okay, so all we had to do was take the H definition, which is x plus 2, and add to it the K definition, which is 2x squared plus x minus 3. Did I read that first one as x plus 2? So h is obviously x squared. So x squared plus 2x squared plus x minus 3. Sorry if I did that. Then we're just going to combine like terms. We've got like terms here. 2x squared and x squared gives you 3x squared. No like terms for the x, so it just stays x. And same for the negative 3. So h plus k of x is 3x squared plus x minus 3. All right. Um, h of x minus f of x, right? We've got these four functions here. We're going to take h and subtract f from it. So if I want h minus f of x, this is going to be my new function and how I'm going to um, notate it. Well, I've got to start with h. I have to start with h, right, which is x squared, and subtract f from it. Now, when we subtract one function from another, Okay, we want to make sure that we're subtracting the entire function. The entire f function needs to be subtracted. So what that means is we've got to put this second function in parentheses. Okay, what happens is that we have to distribute this negative and some signs change. We get through minus 3x, which is not surprising, but we also should get minus 6. So x squared minus 3x minus 6. Okay, so be careful about that. Subtraction's a little tricky. You gotta make sure you put the second function in parentheses and then distribute that negative, okay? Give it a shot. Here's number four, h of x minus k of x, and see what you come up with. You can stop the video, start it back up, and make sure you're doing okay. Okay, you should have gotten for h minus k of x. We start with h, which is x squared, and then we're going to subtract from it all of the k function, which is 2x squared plus x minus 3. Again, we've got to make sure we put that in parentheses so that we can distribute this negative to all three of these. And we get x squared minus 2x squared minus x plus 3. We combine these two like terms, and we get negative x squared minus x plus 3. Okay? And again, that way, if I want to evaluate this new function at, say, oh, I don't know, 4, then all that means is I take the new function here and plug 4 in for it. Uh, remember that we're going to keep that negative um, out front. So we're going to square the 4 and get 16, and then get negative times a 16, get negative 16, minus 4 plus 3. Negative 16 minus 4 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 3 is negative 17. Okay? So no problem. All right. Uh, multiplication. If we're going to multiply two functions, okay, we're simply going to take, if we want to find what f times k of x is, this new function, we're going to start with f, so 3x plus 6. And since we're multiplying and some of these guys have more than one term, I'd go ahead and put these in parentheses. 3x plus 6 is the definition of the f function. And the definition of the k function is 2x squared plus x minus 3. Now, the parentheses are going to help because hopefully the parentheses um, trigger to you that we've got to double distribute, right? So we're going to distribute the 3x here and then distribute the, uh, the 6 here. And so we end up with 3x times 2x squared is 6x to the third. 3x times x is plus 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. And now distribute 3 by the 6. 6 times 2 is 12x squared. 6 times x is 6x. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. And now we have a bunch of like terms that we're going to want to make sure we combine. 
Uh, the 6x to the third does not have any like terms, so it stays there. And 3x squared and 12x squared is plus 15x squared. Right? And then these guys are like terms. Negative 9x and plus 6x gives you negative 3x. And then you're left with this negative 18 out here. And so this is your new function, f times k of x. And if we wanted to evaluate that at a particular x value or a domain, we just plug that number in for x. Okay? All right. Uh, you give it a shot. Here's number six. We're doing multiplication. Um, try that. See what you come up with. Okay, so h times g of x, we want to take the h function, which is x squared, and multiply that times the g function, which is x plus 2. So we want to make sure we distribute the x squared here and here. x squared times x is x to the third. x squared times 2 is 2x squared. No like terms, and so we're done. Okay, and again... If we want to evaluate that for a particular x value, and I know this is not necessarily in your notes, but if we were to write this notation, h times g of 1, that just means we want to plug 1 in for x. So 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared. 1 plus 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. And so 3. So for an input of 1 into this new function, we'd get an output of 3. Okay, now the trickier one here is something that we call uh, that we call composite functions. We're going to uh, perform the composition of functions. For example, the notation here first uh, would look like this. Notice that this looks a little bit like multiplication, only it's an open circle instead of a closed circle. And that open circle we read as composed of. So we want to know what g composed of f of x is. Okay, and this notation might help a little bit. What that means is we're going to take the f function and we're going to put it in for the x of the g function. So we're going to evaluate f of x first and then we're going to use that value as the input for the g function. All right, let's just get to one and see if we can make it make sense. All right. So if I want to know what A composed of B of 2 is, okay, another way to rewrite this is I want to know what A composed of B of 2 is. Well, first of all, I've got to know what B of 2 is, right? So I, over here to the side, I can put in B of 2. That means I want 2 to be the input for the b function, which is right here. So I want to put 2 in for x and get 6. I want to take that value and make it the input to the a function. So a composed of b of 2 means I'm going to take 6 and I'm going to put it into the a function. So 6 squared plus 2 times 6. 6 squared is 36, 6 times 2 is 12, and so we get 48. So A of B of 2 is 48. A composed of B of 2 is 48. Okay. Evaluate B first. You always evaluate the second one first, and then use whatever you get for that in for A. All right? We've got a couple more here, so let's check it out. D composed of C of 4. That means that we're going to take C of 4 first. So we always do the second one first. C of 4 means I'm going to plug 4 in for X for the C function. And then work it out. 4 squared is 16. 6 times 4 is 24. We get 32 minus 24, which is... 8. So C of 4 is 8. 
That means I'm going to take 8 and make it the input for the d function. The d function is 2x minus 8. So I take 2 times 8 minus 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 16 minus 8 is 8. And so d of c of 4 is 8. Okay. Uh, number 9 in your notes, b of c of negative 3. Give that a shot and see what you come up with. Okay, did you evaluate the c function at negative 3 first? If we put negative 3 in for x, we go 2 times negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3. Let's see, negative 3 squared is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, and then negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18, so we get 36 for c of negative 3. Now we're going to take 36 and put it into the b function. So b of c of negative 3 would look like 3 times 36, which is 108. And so we got b of c of negative 3. Okay? All right. Last but not least, a of b, a composed of b of x. So we would kind of do this, I mean, we're going to do this the same way as we've been doing it. What this means is that we're going to take x and we're going to plug it into the b function first, right? I want to know what b of x is. Well, that's kind of weird to think about because we already know what b of x is. b of x is 3x. So I'm going to have to take 3 of x and put it into the a function. So a composed of b of x means that I'm going to take the, uh, the b of x, 3x, and plug it into the a function. So basically, I'm going to take this and put it in for the x here and put it in for the x there. So I get 3x, and we've got to square all of that, plus 2 times 3x. So if we square all of 3x, three, uh, three we get 3 squared, which is 9. Square the x, you get x squared. And then you multiply 2 times 3x, which is 6x. And then we're done. That's our a of b of x. So really, you're just taking the second function and putting it in for all the x's in the first function. Okay? Now you give it a shot. Well, actually, we've got two more here. So let's look at d of d of x, d composed of d of x, because that's kind of weird, right? But it's the same concept all the way down. We're going to find out what d of x is first. Okay, d of x is 2x minus 8. I'm going to take 2x minus 8 and make it the input for the d function. I'm going to use the same function that we just used. So I'm going to take 2x minus 8, and I'm going to put it in for that x right there. It's kind of weird. So we get 2 times 2x minus 8 minus 8. Distribute the 2. You get 4x minus 16 minus 8. And then combine your like terms, 4x minus 24. And this is d of d of x. Okay? Um, hopefully that makes, uh, makes sense. It's a little bit weird to think about putting a function back into the same function, but that's what we're doing. All right? Now here's one for you to try. Number 12, b of d of x. You can stop the video, take a couple minutes, and give it a shot, um, and then you can start the video back up and see how you did. Okay, b of d of x. Again, that means we're going to take d of x, 2x minus 8, and put it in for the x in the b function. So I'm going to take 3 and 
multiply it by 2x minus 8. Distribute that 3, you get 6x minus 24, and you're done. That's it. Okay? Hopefully that makes enough sense. Your homework's out in Canvas. Make sure you get that done by next time, and we'll take any questions you have next time as well.